finally happened. It looks like Kiss is finally dead. So of course, everybody knows Kiss. Whether you know their music or not, I mean, these dudes have created such a strong image. You could go to third world countries and motherfuckers know who Kiss is. They haven't had a hit song since when? Lick it up, maybe? But, uh, but no matter what, it's been a long fucking time since those guys had a hit song. And so the fact that they've been able to keep their image out there and keep it so strong, it really is a testament to them. You know, one of the running gags about Kiss is that they were never going to quit. They had announced that they were going to do a farewell tour, but then years later, there was another Kiss tour and then another and another, you know what I'm saying? And they just recently finished their end of the road tour and it looks like it is in fact going to be the end of the road for Kiss because they have sold their the the full rights to everything Kiss. The song catalog, the logos, the names, the images, all that shit is now owned by Pop House Entertainment Group and they're behind the very popular ABBA Experience which is like a uh, an immersive 3D, whatever the fuck type of VR type show. And they, of course, are the ones who came up with the KISS avatars. They've already put their plans out there in terms of what they want to do with it. It would basically be like the rock version of what they've done with ABBA. In fact, I think one of the members of one of the original members of ABBA is like part part owner of the company or some shit. Anyways, they ponied up three hundred million dollars that they gave Kiss. If anything, it, it, it's like a closing of the book on the actual living members of Kiss because this means that you are never gonna see Gene Simmons in that fucking leotard with his fucking nippies hanging out and his platform boots spitting the blood and all that shit. You'll still see the tongue. Anytime that motherfucker gets on TV, he's, he'll do the tongue. But you know, it really is, it's almost like the death of Kiss. From here on out, Kiss essentially only exists as ghosts. Digital ghosts that we're gonna get to go and watch and shit like that. It's almost like dystopian to think of. Of course, I mean, look, Kiss, they had gotten to the point as a live band where they were not able to fucking do it anymore. Whatever you felt about those dudes, those motherfuckers could put on a live show. That's That was the main thing that these dudes were known for, was their ability to fucking tear it down. And to have them not be able to do that anymore incredibly sad. Gene Simmons, of course, he did have a comment uh, he about how things are going to be going forward. He says, and I quote, kiss the touring band is over. What pop house will do with our images, our music and our personas is unlike anything anyone has ever seen. Now at the, uh, at the tail end of the last kiss, what is, I guess now officially the last kiss tour at the tail end of it, they introduced the KISS avatars and everybody sort of thought, and I know myself included, uh, they'll run with this for a second. If it doesn't work out, you're gonna see them back on the road. But this is sort of like the final shoe to drop to where we, we, have, to, we have to understand that Gene Simmons is, he's telling the truth here. KISS the touring band, KISS the band of living human beings who painted their face and got into leotards and fucking blue fire and had their fucking guitar explode and all that bullshit. Those people are not going to be those men anymore. And it's a sad thing. It's kind of the end of an era. So there's a billboard report out there that says that the kiss avatar show is going to, to open up in 2027. It's an unspecified U S city, which means they just haven't booked anything. Uh, but they know that they're aiming for 2027 as the debut of the KISS avatars. Gene Simmons also commenting on the show, he says, and I quote, we went to see the ABBA show and it blew our socks off. And the technology since then has improved by leaps and bounds. We've seen sketches of what it will look like and we looked like the X-Men. Now, just from the uh, the teasers that they put out there, you could see that they wanted you know, the Gene Simmons demon character to be like a literal demon with fucking wings blowing fire and all that shit. 
Um, Paul Stanley, what's his character? He's the star or some shit like that. So he'll essentially just be himself a fucking prima donna prancing ass motherfucker. What will the fucking spaceman character be? Because Tommy Thayer, by all accounts, was like just a really cool guy. He had been, I guess, roadie for the band or some bullshit like that. Uh, if you listen to Ace Fraley, he was just his fucking gopher. I'm a, I'm surprised the fans bought Tommy, you know, pretty much because I think for several years that Tommy was in the band, people didn't even know it wasn't me. Yeah, but I mean, when I last tour I did with Kiss, you know, Tommy Thayer was bringing me sandwiches, you know, and uh, he was a tour manager and yeah. go for Ace Fraley, who is, of course, the original Spaceman, He's a fucking weirdo. You listen to that guy talk. He is clearly not playing with a full deck, if you know what I'm saying. I'm not. The, I'm the trap player. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, the cat man and the fucking all that bullshit. I, I am really interested to see how that's going to play out. And I'm sure it will be cool on some level. I think the the original concepts for it were. A, you would have it in these venues, uh, kind of like the Sphere in Vegas or something like that, that can have a really immersive experience. It really, look at anywhere where the ABBA show is happening. That's where you could do the Kiss show because it's supposedly going to be similar, except just a bit more grandiose. There was talk of uh, like VR concerts and shit like that, where I guess maybe on your PlayStation or get on your Apple Vision or your fucking uh, Meta, what is it, the Oculus or some shit like that, and have a uh, a full experience in terms of the the Kiss show. Sound it, it all sounds really interesting, and it sounds like something that if it's done well, it could be really cool. I don't know how it's going to be a a long running thing, but I, I just I kind of feel like once you've seen it what the fuck else are you going to do? Uh, like, would they start creating content in terms of storytelling? Cause I guess theoretically you could have uh, like almost like a uh, superhero y Marvel -y sort of stories that lead up to concerts. Like, you know how, like if you watch pro wrestling, they have the weeks of fucking TV that builds up to the, whatever the match is you got to pay for or some shit. You could probably do that with like some sort of content. You know what? Actually, Ghost does that. Uh, those of you who are unfamiliar with Ghost, if you're a Kiss fan, maybe you might like Ghost. It's it, it, it might be up your alley. But if you follow Ghost's YouTube channel, in between everything they do, there's like a running story that sort of explains the background of these characters. So maybe that might be a cool thing where in between these shows, you have some sort of build that can create a buzz. Cause once again, at the end of the day, you're not going to have any new music to play. I mean, would you have the original guys go record new stuff? Um, Cause you know what? That is true. Gene Simmons did say kiss. The touring band is over. He didn't specify kiss the uh, recording band. So you never know. Maybe, maybe kiss has got a little bit of life left in it yet. Once again, I can't imagine it's going to be fantastic. Sorry, guys. It's just rarely do elderly men in leotards make fucking relevant music. It just it hasn't happened yet up to this point. I doubt it's going to happen going forward. When asked about the show, Pop House CEO Per Sundin says we have a lot of plans for Kiss. We want to keep the legacy. We want to extend and amplify it for new generations. So this deal, it's not just the rights to the makeup, the characters, all that shit. It is their entire musical catalog. Now, if you're Kiss, you don't give a fuck because this is finally the big payday. You guys split it up. It's going to get you clear through the rest of your lives. But, you know, it's sad. It's like when somebody retires or like you have an actor that gets old and after a while you stop seeing them at all. And you know it's because they're declining and you don't want to be seen in public necessarily that way. And very sad. And I don't want to think that of kiss. I don't want to see Gene Simmons as a curled up, fucked up, limp dick old man, but it happens to all of us, I guess. I'm just praying I can stay alive long enough for the cybernetics. Cause really, if you look at it, we're just animated meat. All that is who we are is kind of in our brain. The, but the only thing that keeps our meat going is the electricity that's running through it at all times. 
So if we could kind of upload our brains into a computer, then you could theoretically upload yourself into that and be a very cool, uh, whatever you want to be a demon, a fucking big dick dog, you know, whatever you want to do, it'd be nice. But of course, whoever runs the servers is God. Do we want to live that way? I don't know. But uh, anyways, kiss. This is going to be really weird once one of them dies. Because these fucking, these avatars, really the point of them is that they will go on beyond the lives of the actual members of KISS. We can live on eternally. The band deserves to live on because the band is bigger than we are. That's going to be fucking weird. If you're an old school KISS fan and like, let's say Peter Chris dies, God forbid, you drop some fucking acid and you go to the the kiss avatar show oh my god it'll be like uh, you'll be crying your guts out you'll be talking to them it'll be fantastic maybe if you like essentially rebooted kiss obviously if you're looking to sell the show to kids that may not have originally given a fuck about kiss the albums are new to you essentially so you could like remaster them and use ai and shit to make them all perfect and new sounding um, imagine if they did like modernized versions of the songs and you've got like demon gene up there doing like a trap version of fucking, I was made for loving you or something stupid like that. You fucked it up. You fucked it up. I'm interested to see what Ace Fraley is going to say about this because God knows he didn't get the fucking avatars in the first place. I don't get this avatar thing that they're going to do. It, it, I mean, I saw some of it on a video on YouTube last night. And it kind of looked like it was, you know, geared towards children. Yeah. And it's not rock and roll. But if there's any new recordings, any new anything in regards to this, we will keep you up to date with what's going on. Anyways, moving on. 